Secretary General Lunds, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a pleasure to welcome our NATO partners, partners to the White House. This evening has been a special opportunity to celebrate the unprecedented success of our enduring friendship, our partnership, an alliance dedicated to peace and freedom. 35 years ago, in the troubled aftermath of a tragic conflict, 12 nations met here in Washington to sign the North Atlantic Treaty. That event was an act of realism. The member nations recognized the threat to their security and undertook to meet it together. The establishment of the North Atlantic Alliance was also an act of optimism, an affirmation of the enduring vitality of Western civilization. 35 years of peace with freedom testify to the wisdom and the foresight of those nations and of the four other nations who have since joined NATO. Although the founders could not have foreseen the dramatic changes that have taken place since 1949, their vision was right on the mark. By uniting Europe and North America, NATO has made possible the longest period of peace and prosperity in modern history. And today, our proud alliance remains united in its commitment to the defense of democracy and individual liberty. But we cannot be content with the accomplishments of the past. As we look ahead, there are compelling reasons to strengthen even further our solidarity and unity. Our commitment to collective security will continue to be an indispensable bulwark against aggression, terrorism, and tyranny. Our unity will be the essential framework for building a constructive dialogue with our adversaries and reducing the risks of war and the level of nuclear arms. And I know that it will be our societies, the democracies, that will offer a bright and hopeful future for our people and for people everywhere. We can be confident. The events of the past year challenged us, and the Western democracy stood firm in the face of an intense Soviet campaign of intimidation aimed at undermining NATO's commitment to defend Europe and preserve peace. And today, we are stronger and more conscious of our unity. And that's of crucial importance, because when the Soviet Union becomes convinced that NATO cannot be shaken, it may finally realize it has a clear and compelling interest to return to the negotiating table. We will be raiding, ready to meet them halfway. Tonight is more than a celebration of an anniversary. It's also an opportunity to recognize the special contributions of our Secretary General. Joseph Lunds is a distinguished diplomat and a man of many virtues. First as the Dutch Foreign Minister, and then at NATO's helm, he has been at the center of the transatlantic bridge for nearly 30 years. His mission, his vision, I should say his humor and his patience have sustained us in good times and bad. As Secretary General, he's never lost sight of the goals and objectives of our alliance, and peace has been his profession. You have been a trusted friend, an honest broker, a respected colleague, and above all, an invaluable leader of the Atlantic Alliance. Joseph, you've said that the state of our alliance is like Wagner's music, better than it sounds. <laughs> well, I must tell you that thanks largely to your efforts, I rather like the way the alliance sounds. And I hope that even in retirement, you will still watch over our partnership and that you will not hesitate to share your counsel with us. Ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of Joseph Lund's uncommon dedication to the ideals of our alliance and in tribute to his outstanding service and enduring contributions to our freedom and security, it is my great privilege to bestow America's highest civilian award the Medal of Freedom on Secretary General Lunds. But before I invite him to receive the medal, I would ask that you raise your glasses 
Join me in a toast to Secretary General Joseph Lunds and to the organization he has faithfully served and so ably guided. Mr. President, distinguished guests, I feel greatly flattered, deeply honored, immensely proud by having received from your hands, Mr. President, this very special award, which I value highly and for which I am very, very grateful. Thank you very much indeed. May I say that I have now been nearly 13 years Secretary General of this great organization. And looking back on those 13 years, I must and I want to gratefully acknowledge the immense role the United States has played in this alliance. Far from being an hegemonic power far from imposing your wishes and your will on your allies in an alliance where every decision must be taken by unanimity, you have always taken into account the views and the opinions of your European allies. And it is simply a truism to say that without the presence of more than 300,000 of your sons in Europe, Europe the world would be a far worse place than it is now. And I would not be standing here, and nor would be the 16 ministers of this alliance who have gathered here in, in Washington and in Y to have our yearly conclave, where I must say we had an excellent, an excellent exchange of views. The fact that your Secretary of State Sir George Schulz and Caspar Weinberger, the Secretary of Defense, are amongst your guests, as well as so many distinguished people whom we have known, some of whom for a long time, and some who have become personal friends of mine, and I look at Tepley Bennett, who is now under Secretary of the State Department, and so many others I could name, makes, of course, this evening even more special than it is, Mr. President. I could go on telling you, the guests here, and the ministers of the Alliance, that we have gone through, through some more difficult times, and that we have gone through very good times. Let me say that if I have left, had left this Alliance last year at this time, I would be less confident, less optimistic. But the fact that the United Kingdom the Federal Republic of Germany and Italy have started to station on their territory the modernized missiles in order to counter the threat of the SS-20 and thereby restoring the credibility of our nuclear deterrence. And on that credibility, Mr. President, you have said it often and I repeat it, on that credibility, the peace of this world rests. And Le Président d'Honneur, Monsieur Chasson said it yesterday and has repeated it today. I, I therefore repeat, I go with a certain optimism. I am not pretending that I am deliriously happy to lay down my job as Secretary General. <laughs> I, uh, if I were to say what I feel, I would say I am somewhat content. But that, is, that is perhaps already an overstatement. But, let me say that all 
the various positions I have held in life, like, like Secretary of State of the Netherlands, and I was for 14 years a diplomat, the most rewarding, the most rich position, rich in achievement, and important in what the Alliance have done, has been that I was chosen in 71 to serve this great alliance, the greatest, the most important alliance and organization for peace the world has known. And you are quite right, Mr. President, the, the peace has been preserved since for a far longer period, certainly in Europe, than we could have hoped for in the, in the, in the days after the last war. And Mr. President, may I, may I end by saying that we are all deeply grateful for your unflinching support for the Alliance. You have shown it over and over again. And let me say, too, that there was all, I will always treasure this very special award, which I will, for the days which will still be with me, I hope, always see as one of the most important and the most precious award which was ever bestowed on me. Thank you very much, Mr. President. All the best to you and to that great nation, the United States of America.